Earlier this year, I showed you guys how I made this costume for a new LARP that I was going to attend. And that LARP went so well that I decided to keep playing it. But a costume is never standing still and will always be improved upon. In this case, this is the winter version of the costume, but as this next event is in September, I decided to switch it up a bit for the summer version. Because I decided to add a short leather armor for the summer version. I don't even know yet what it's going to look like, because usually I figure out what the armor will look like once I start drawing out the pattern. All that I know is that I want to keep it simple and keep it short. So without further ado, let's get patterning. For this, I took my six year old duct tape dummy torso out of storage. The measurements are still pretty much the same around the bust and waist, so let's just use this. To be able to draw the pattern on, I'm going to cover it in a layer of cling film and then another layer of duct tape. This way the dummy is reusable, instead of the lines you already see on here from my Daedric armor. After the extra layer on my dummy, I've traced out the maximum width for the armor. You can see here that I've put a line here and here. This width is what happens if I put both my arms straight forward. So basically this width is the maximum that I can have and still be able to move. I also measured my neck, what's going to be slightly comfortable, and I traced the middle. Other than that, this is my canvas to work on. I can design the entire armor on here and then cut everything off, see what will happen. I think I want a rather short armor, something that ends just below the bust. So let's say somewhere around here and then have that curve down a bit. Not too drastical, but just with a slight curve. Now I can just say, okay, I want it to end here and here. But considering we're just drawing this, you never know if this is going to be symmetrical. Nonetheless, I am going to trace it on both sides and what will happen after that, I'll show you later. Now, the idea at first is that I wanted an asymmetrical armor, something that resembled an archery guard. Because, well, it's practically an archery guard with the extra added thing that there will be a button here. What we're going to need anyway is to have this go upwards and we can do the same on the other side. This is what we're going to do on the shoulder end. I think I'm going to leave the neckline for what it is right now. I might make it smaller just because I usually like really wide necklines. And actually, I think we already have the basics here then. If I trace this, but I'm going to do that off camera because I'm going to need to move this around. I can make this into a nice smooth curve. And well, the back, we can basically do whatever we want. I think I'm actually going to do the same. I want to have this end relatively high and then have it curve downwards something like that i'll trace that properly later in the back i'm going to keep really simple just uh, i'm going to need to trace some arm lines and the neck and this will just be a single piece on the front however we have some curves i did definitely notice my dummy is not symmetrical either but we'll fix something for that so um, for curves, we can do multiple things. Um, the only requirement that there is, is that the curve basically goes over the breast part, uh, just because this is where most of the curves are. So that's where you want to, well, be able to move some pattern pieces. So you want to have the split of where you put pattern piece A and B somewhere over the part with the most curves. So just to show you, I think what I'm going to do for this one it's going with a pretty drastical curve as well. What I think might be really pretty is if I have this line, just go all the way down over the biggest part and curve downwards again, something like that. We can do the same thing uh, here. Something like that. Yeah, I think that might be pretty. I have to keep in mind what I'm wearing underneath. It will be the summer version of the tunic, uh, which means keyhole neckline. So do I then want a high neckline or a low neckline? Most important thing is that there's leather here for the button. The only protection this armor needs to give is the archery protection. So it's not an armor armor per se. So 
I don't really need to keep in mind the general try to cover as much as the body. I think I might actually put the neckline down a bit somewhere here, just because that will also be more comfortable if you can move the neck more. And then what do I want? Do I want a round or a V neckline? Uh, I think I might actually go for a round neckline this time. And I want it to be slightly wider than the neckline I've already drawn, just because I think this was the width of my neck. So then I want this to be slightly wider. That means that right now we've got the basic lines of our armor. Uh, what I'm going to do next is finish drawing this, see if I can get this curve correct and finish the back. And then I'll be back with you guys. After drawing, we can start cutting the pattern all across the lines we have drawn on. We cut between the dummy and the layer of cling film, so that we are left with a thin cling film and duct tape layer. Just out of personal preference, I first cut along the top and the bottom before cutting the pattern pieces themselves. Off camera, I also decided to go for a slightly different pattern, with curved seams instead of straight ones. They shouldn't matter much for the fit, but visually I just liked it better that way. It is correct these pieces are not symmetrical. We're going to fix that in the next step. Considering my dummy was more shaped on one side than the other, I'll be grabbing the side piece on the side with the most curves. When we lay this on the paper, we see this can't lay flat. There are two ways to fix this. Either we're going to wet form the leather on, or it can be slashed so it has an extra seam. Considering I want this armor to have a slightly stitched together make-do look, but made by someone who does know what they are doing, I'm opting to add an extra seam here by cutting the part with the most curve. As we can see when laying it down, it curves inwards and overlaps. So I cut the piece entirely and made it into two separate pattern pieces. Then we can trace these two pieces on paper, just as they are. For the front part, we can fold the duct tape pattern in half, choose the side we like most, and then double this again so both sides are symmetrical. The front part also won't lay flat, so I marked the fullest part of the bust and cut a line from the side of the pattern to this mark. After which, we can trace this as well. I'm trying to save some paper, as this is a nice and sturdy version, so it might not be the easiest way to get a full pattern, but hey, it works! After tracing the first half, we fold the paper and cut it so it is mirrored. Again, after adding some other pieces of paper, we can cut the rest of the pattern. Then, folding it open, we have the full front. The back won't really lay flat either, so this will be cut into multiple pattern pieces as well. I think cutting it straight to the middle back will already make it a lot better, which indeed it does. This can then also be cut and traced to make our last pattern piece. I doubted whether I'd go the proper route and make a mock-up. And considering this dummy is already quite old and this pattern isn't too big, we shall do it properly. The best cheap substitute for leather is foam, so I grabbed my 3mm EVA foam and traced the pieces. On the side pieces I will need some overlap, so I added 1cm to each piece that will go under another piece. Normally I'd add this to the paper pattern, but I only remembered that after I had cut them already, but this works as well. After cutting the pieces, we can trace the mirrored versions of the pieces that need to be cut twice. To save measuring, I used my earlier cut from foam pieces as a template. Do make sure you cut on the inside of the drawn line, as cutting on the outside makes the pieces ever so slightly bigger, which makes them fit less well. Then we can start assembling the mock-up. The lines that need to lay flush against each other can be taped up with regular tape. The pieces that need to overlap can be attached to each other with double-sided tape. For this I use what was sold as carpet tape. It is strong enough to hold it together, but it can be unstuck easily if adjustment needs to be made. Here we can already see one problem. Somehow the sides are ending up longer than the front. Oh well, this is an easy fix. So, uh, yeah, I asked my partner to take me into this interesting construction, because who knew that if you use the dummy from six years ago and start to do pole dancing in between, the shape of your shoulders changes. It doesn't fit at all. So, um, this is what I came up with. I am currently sorta fitting the foam mock-up, and I taped it to some paper on top because they do not attach anymore. 
in no way or shape could the foam mock-up go completely over my shoulders and touch each other on the same height. And this is what it looks like on the back. As you can see, it doesn't fit at all. But the solution to this is quite easy. I just took two pieces of paper, taped the front and the back to the pieces of paper, or at least asked my partner to do that for me. Now we can grab a pen and draw what the pattern pieces should be. On a side note, what I do notice is that this could, if I wanted to, go slightly higher. And on the back, I really like where the neckline ends. So we can keep those, that's a good thing. Aside from that, you notice that this will poke out. I think that is because I put in these darts. So I'm probably going to move this seam up a bit because I think this is a really short piece to have for this lower piece. Or I can just make this slightly longer and I think I might actually go for that because I like how short this is, but it is still a sort of boot plate armor. Eh. And I think this ends slightly too high for that. And I think it's more comfortable if this piece also is one centimeter lower. So that's something we can change. Aside from that, at the sides, I think I'm going to lengthen the back piece a bit because there is a rather large gap, but this can be a bit longer. I don't want them to overlap or lay flush. I do want there to be a bit of a gap and then just have two or three, probably two straps uh, running across the gap. I'm also just checking for the height. I think that's okay. And also on this side, I think that's okay. I think uh, the thing I need to do most is if I lengthen this, make sure that this bit doesn't end up even higher. But that's it. We can now take this off. I have at least traced the pieces as they lay on the paper. And then I can change the pattern pieces from there. After removing the pattern from me and putting it back on the dummy, we can see that indeed, there is quite a gap between the dummy shoulders and the pattern as it was pasted on me just now. We can now draw the pattern pieces as they should be and transfer them to either the foam or the paper pieces. Instead of trying to make everything perfectly symmetrical, I transfer the shoulder straps individually on each side. I am pretty right-handed, especially in sports, and I can see that in the pattern. My right shoulder needs slightly more adjusting than my left. The difference isn't big enough to show asymmetry in the final thing, but it will sit neater. So, asymmetry in the pattern it is. And with that, we have all of our pattern pieces fully mocked up and ready to be cut out of the leather. But I'm gonna keep that for our next video. If you wanna see it, don't forget to subscribe. And with that, thank you all for watching, and see you guys next time.